In this series, we're talking about why we do not monetize our purpose. We've, look, we've looked at uh, a foundation and we've said that purpose is universal. Every individual has purpose. You cannot find me someone that you can say this one was created without a purpose. There was no reason for their existence, but they are here. I've challenged people. You cannot tell me that there is someone of that nature. There isn't any. So purpose at an individual level is universal. Every one of us has it. But then we still have scores of us who are quote unquote jobless, who are poor, who are, who are economically challenged. And yet in that moment when we are poor, we're economically challenged, we are quote unquote jobless, there is no ignoring the fact that there is purpose within us. The question is, how come we don't monetize that purpose? That's been the gist of the discussions in this, uh, not really discussion, but that's just been, been the gist of the talk in these episodes. And today I want to continue and conclude what I started yesterday on one particular point, why we don't monetize our purpose. It's going to be interesting. Stay tuned. Welcome to the Life Signatures Podcast with Lawrence Namale. Lawrence is a life coach, author, and keynote speaker who loves to tackle different topics on purpose, productivity, and resilience. His mission in life is to awaken all your boundless possibilities available in you. Life Signatures Podcast is dedicated to bring to reality every single person who knows that deep down in their gut, there's got to be more to life than this. And now, here is your host, Lawrence Namale. A recap is going to help us very well here when we're talking about the reasons why we do not monetize our purpose. Of course, I've got to finish what I said yesterday, but let's just do a recap. Previously, we've said that one of the reasons as to why we don't monetize our purpose is sheer ignorance, pure old ignorance. The Bible tells us my people perish for lack of knowledge. Every place where we have a dark darkened in our minds where we do not have information we do not have revelation we don't have knowledge we don't have insight in that place we fail you can be a prince maybe born in royalty if you don't know that information it's not going to help you you will live way beyond below your your privileges because of that entrance of information is the one that brings us light Therefore, if you do not know how, you don't know the mechanics, the exact mechanics, the things that you can be able to do to start monetizing your purpose, what happens? You will not monetize it. We have already seen that you are a, pap- a person of purpose. There's no question about that. You are gifted. You are talented. When we talk about gifts and talents, we're not talking about football and singing and painting and those major standout things. There are people who are gifted in administration. There are people who are gifted in child care. There are people who are gifted in just making sure that things are organized. There are people who are gifted in bringing people together. There are people who are gifted in hospitality. I mean, gifts don't have to be few, football and and uh, sports and, and, and media. No, they range from very many, very many things. I'm going to send you to a book. I think the book is called, uh, it's called uh, Shape. S-H-A-P-E, S-H-A-P-E, written by a guy called Eric Ries. Eric Ries did, a, you could say it's a, a, a prologue of this man's book. Uh, the Purpose Driven Life was written by a, a, a person, I've forgotten his name, I don't know why I've forgotten his name. But he left that The Purpose Driven Life to be general, very general. 
But then Eric Ries started becoming a bit specific and he has a catalog of different areas of gifting in his that in that book called Shape. You can go and check it check it out. It's a very old book actually. It's like 20 years old or something of that like like that, but that information is gold. He says you can be gifted in things like administration. You can be a gifted cook. You can be a gifted zipliner. <laughs> The thing is, uh, gifts don't... Uh, anyway, I'm belaboring that. As long as you have ignorance of turning that gift into a profit, you will not. Secondly, start a school. What did we say about start a school? Start a school is culture. Uh, Peter Drucker said, culture eats strategy for breakfast. I mean, what we know, what comes automatically, what we've always known is what we'll always do. We always wake up in the morning. We don't sleep during the day. We sleep at night. That's culture, right? It's it's a given. It's if you change it, it's weird. Now the starter school has not identified the gig economy. We talked about the gig economy yesterday. I'm gonna talk about it again today. The starter school is for jobs. Increasingly, even when we see the evidence saying, "Hey, wait a minute." Not everyone can flourish in that starter school. Not everyone is flourishing there. Just the fact that from class one, I mean from primary school to secondary school, there are casualties. Casualties not because they, uh, um, I mean, they, 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 they lacked school fees. They had school fees, but they just couldn't make it because they are not gifted academically. And you can add even those ones who did not have school fees and they're gifted. I mean, there are casualties in that starter school. You go to from high school to university, we have casualties and I'm one of them. I'm one of them. It tells you something. It tells you that our starter school doesn't serve everything, doesn't serve everybody. And by the way, this starter school operates not just in Kenya, not just in Uganda, not just in Tanzania, not just in East Africa. It operates in Africa at large. In the whole wide world, it operates at large. You go to America, they're grappling with joblessness because of starter school. Because the guys who are jobless have gifts and have talents and have purpose, which can be monetized. So we're talking about from yesterday, we're talking about the third reason as to why people don't monetize their purpose is no proven path. That's it. There is no proven path. The proven path is for jobs. It's been proven. You go to school, you earn a degree, you graduate with a degree, you get a master's, you get a PhD, and people are going to give you a job, going to open doors and give you an interview and employ you because of the skill, the skill that you've gotten in your academics. They're going to employ you for that. It's proven. I mean, how many people do you know that are employed that have degrees? Many. How many people do you know that are employed that have diplomas? You can count them. You, I mean, you can't even finish counting them. You know them. Some of them are your friends, relatives, loved ones, spouses, children. You know them. Parents. But then how many, how many do you know that are earning from their gifts and talents? How many do you know that are earning from their passion? It is not a proven path in such a way that it's not a critical mass the same way it is for jobs. So the same way we go at great length to prepare for the birth of our children is the same way we go to a great length to prepare for their growth. The sinister thing with that is that we assume we assume that what path we took is what path they should take. And we don't want to hear anything. We don't want to hear anything. I mean, we see different, like they saw me in, in primary school. They saw me writing and they were amazed. They will pass, teachers will pass in the, in the staff room. They will pass my essays from one teacher to another reading and marveling. But because there was no proven path of earning or monetizing writing, I was forced to go to high school and to look for a degree. Never mind the degree was not anywhere in writing. Nothing. Doctor, engineer, lawyer, accountant, architect, pharmacist. Those were the starter school. Those were the proven path that they are there. Here's the thing. Most of the path that people take in life create a career. 
Never factor in the things that relate to purpose. That's the thing. We are gravitating towards careers and not calling. A friend of mine, I'm going to interview her in the month of May, going to listen to May 2023. Betty OGL moved the other way from career to calling. She has actually created a product out of it. Career to calling. And the thing is, it's not a proven path. Even me when she was moving from the career to purpose, I'm her coach. But I felt like you need some kind of safety before you make this move. Why? Because it's embedded inside of me, the status quo. And this is one of the reasons as to why we don't monetize our purpose because there's no proven path. We never factor in people's gifts and people's talents in careers, in ideas, in their calling, especially their calling. And we never factor in their passion. I'll say it again. Most of the part that people take in life to create a career never factor in the things that relate to purpose. Things like talents, gifts, ideas, calling, and passion. They never. In so doing, the world has a vague idea about purpose to profit it has a vague there is no path whatsoever for people of purpose there is no seriously obvious that's the word there's no obvious path for people of purpose everyone is somehow supposed to follow a proven tested and authenticated career path in life when we're preparing for people to have a career path we seldom use them as an input we seldom use their capacity and the capabilities. We seldom use their gifts, their talents as input. Right? We seldom use their passion as input. Seldom use their ideas as input. Seldom use their rare talents, their raw talents. This is so uncanny. It, it, it can even be, I mean, it's pervasive. The world of goal setting is about this. When people set goals, you find that the path has already been prepared for them. When people are setting goals, finances, oh, millionaire, the path has already been set for them. People set goals for finances, for a house, for a car, for a spouse, for kids, for adventure. And for early retirement, someone else set the path and people are just following just after that person. People are following that path blindly and that is why even in the attainment of the said goals, people are still disillusioned with life. The fact of the matter is that it is difficult to create a proven path of purpose for people to follow because you cannot Maybe you will never, ever make it uniform. Never. You cannot even set an exam. I've said this over and over again in this episode. You cannot set an exam for purpose because my purpose is different from yours. The strategies might be the same. The principles might be the same. But the path, you can never have the same path of purpose. You find that you cannot examine purpose, you cannot examine passion, you cannot examine ideas, you cannot examine... How do you make an idea wrong? How do you make purpose wrong? How do you ma- I mean, you cannot examine it. There is no standard measure for purpose and that is why society has never created something to nurture it. Society has never created an exam for it. There is no official path the world over where people can turn their purpose into profit. What we have available is a uniform education system that forces everyone to it, regardless of their uniqueness, regardless of their capacity. That is why everywhere where there is a system, there is a phenomenon called joblessness it's it everywhere where there is an a formal education system in every country where there is a formal education system they they are jobless people tweet that is it any wonder that this system has crowded out the natural gifts and natural talents of people a path has never been created for it 
So Ralph Waldo Emerson said, do not go where there is a path. Where, do not go where the path may lead. Go instead where there is no path and leave a trail. And this is why it's difficult for us, those of us who are pioneering. That message should resonate with all of us who are gifted, trying to stick it out with our purpose. Now, there is no path. If there is no path, what do you do? Do you ignore your gifts and your talents? Do you ignore your ideas and your passion? Do you ignore your calling? No. Increasingly, there is a place for purpose to profit on earth. It is, we are seeing it. It started coming out. Organizations are already talking about, if you go to HBR, the uh, Harvard Business Review, they're already talking about aspects of purpose to profit for organizations, for companies. They have papers out there going on. You go where there is no path and you leave a trail and it is not easy. It is not proven. It is not tested. And part of the solution to our life is converting our purpose into profit. It's not going to be easy. But let me predict in 10 years time, this 2023, in 10 years time, there will be a firm place for purpose to profit the world over. In fact, so firm that it starts, it's going to start boxing out the status quo. Well, that's it for today. Tomorrow, we're going to look at one more. One more reason as to why people don't monetize their purpose. But until then, think about that. And bye-bye. Thank you for listening to Life Signatures Radio. If you enjoyed today's show, subscribe to Life Signatures Radio on iTunes, Stitcher, or visit our website at lifesignatures.libsyn.com. Life Signatures Radio, fresh, clean, and inspiring.